Hey, beautiful people. Crystal here from Elite Hair Care USA. So today we're doing a transformation on my client here who is having some alopecia issues going on in her crown and in her hairline in the front. So we started off by going ahead and relaxing her. She is getting a short style, which is a style that she chose based on um, some pictures that she saw. And if you guys can tell, even though she is now fully relaxed, she does have a little bit of that curl pattern or the S pattern going on, which is also normal when you are doing your first relaxer. So the hair does not necessarily need to be bone straight, but it does need to be straight enough that we are able to um, cut the hair, manipulate the hair, and lay it down nice and smooth. So I started out in the nape of her neck by creating what we call my guide. And then I went through and just blended in that area of course using my shears now if you notice down in the nape area she is a little more thin in that area that can come along with wig wearing um, that comes along with stress on the hairline people think that the hairline is just the front of your face when it really is all the way around including above the ears and in the nape of the neck now treatment wise i would definitely recommend our edge repair system this system is catered towards hairline repair it is an invasive i'm not gonna say invasive because that hurts but it's an intense system where you know it really targets that area and helps to regrow that stubborn hair that probably was stagnated or malnourished from the beginning so after the haircut i went through and i wrapped her using our elite silk wrap foam now, when we are doing a mold for a client who has a situation where they have alopecia, number one, the cut is very important because you have to use that cut to create that illusion. And if you cut too much, you will literally expose the area. If you cut too little, then you will not have um, that nice, smooth finish. And then if you notice in the front, whenever I'm doing my molds for clients who have alopecia, I always mold going towards the face. And I use what we call a down and around method, but I go from the middle of the back of the head towards the front. So her trouble area was more in her crown area, and then she did have a little bit of sparseness on the other side of her hairline. But in her crown, the sparseness was actually the, probably the worst, and in her sideburns or her hairline wasn't as, as bad as we, as we actually thought because when we relaxed it, all of that hair that was standing up actually laid right down and it created that illusion that there was nothing going on in that area. So she had a good amount of coverage. Okay. So once she dried, I'm just going through and I'm using the H2 Pro 3 tenths of an inch iron to curl and smooth out those areas. Now, a lot of you always ask what the temperature is of the iron. When I am doing my curl on my client, I'm usually somewhere between 425 and 450. If the client's hair is extremely sparse or fine textured, then of course that number is decreased. But when you are doing your hair at home, I don't recommend you having it on such a high level of heat unless you have a, a better uh, mindset of control like a hairstylist. But when you're at home, you want to keep it to somewhere between 350 and 375 unless you have a more coarse texture of hair where it does require a little more heat than normal. Now, I'm sorry that my elbow got in the way of the curl part. <laughs> I'm sorry you guys weren't able to see that part. But I'm sure you get the picture as we go through with the service. So the crazy part is when we first started her service, we had the idea that we were going to add some tracks to the front of her hair just to give her a little more coverage where her hair was really short and broken off. At first, we did say we were going to put the tracks in and she said, you know what, I don't even I don't think I want to actually do the tracks. I'm just going to embrace it and we're going to work with it. And that's when we decided, you know what, it's cool. She doesn't want the tracks. That's fine. We're just going to go ahead and curl her up using her own hair and allow that area to grow out, which was perfectly fine with me. I was actually very happy that she chose that route because that is allowing her to really embrace the fact that she's trying to get her hair nice and healthy and she wants to grow it out the right way. Not saying that adding tracks is the wrong way. Some clients don't really have an option unless they are um, getting a pixie cut. But in her case, she just wanted to keep a little bit of her length in the top. And she was okay with not adding any tracks to the front. Now, I did not get to actually turn her all the way around. Why? Because just out of respect for the client, um, I didn't want you guys to really focus so much on you know her face and the insecurity of that area but she did allow me to record and she did allow me to um show you guys what was going on in regards to the style so it's not that she didn't want to show her face or anything but just out of respect to my client 
and I know that this was her first time with me. Um, I really didn't ask her per se if I could show her face, but I just chose not to show her face as much, which I'm trying to get into that habit where, you know, you respect your client's boundaries. And even though I get permission to film, it's not every situation that I want you guys to be dead smack in the client's face. Okay, so that's just out of professional opinion. <laughs> So you guys will see that in some videos, some videos you might see the client's face and they don't really care. You know, it's it's just will change from here or there. Now for the crown of her head, I'm just giving her a little bit of bump, I'm smoothing that area out. I felt like this style for her was really nice. Um, it was a great starting point for her. She can allow that crown area to grow out. It's easy maintenance for her because it's her hair. And at the same time, in regards to care, she'd basically be using the hair repair and growth shampoo and conditioner, the Elite Silk Wrap Foam, and then of course the Edge Repair for her hairline um, area. Now, when you're having a shortcut or when you have a shortcut, you can't use a lot of serums and oils, so be mindful of that. It's probably best that you do what we call like a cocktail and you add your serum to your shampoo and conditioner during your wash day. But with short hair, we're not doing a lot of that on a normal day because it really is not required. When you do your wash day, that's when it's really most required. Now, I want you guys to comment, tell us what you thought about her transformation style. Um, did we hide that area really well? I feel like we did. She loved it as she walked out of the salon. I feel like the new her is going to be even better than the hair, the her that walked in, which was already great as it is. But I appreciate you guys for watching. Please don't forget to thumbs up this video and also subscribe to my channel. And I'll see you guys in the next video.